May we speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, it's a joy to join you all this morning for the Feast of Corpus Christi. It goes, of, it goes without saying, of course, that this year, this feast feels perhaps rather strange. Lockdown prohibits us from physically gathering together to receive the body of Christ, which sacramentally forms us into the body of the church. All the pomp and ceremony of a typical Corpus Christi festive celebration remains impossible. The procession and exhibition of this sacrament and the sacramental taking of consecrated bread and wine. Yet gather as a body, we still do through this strange online virtual medium. And we still receive the benefits of our Lord's body. We consume his body with our eyes. We give our heart's desire to be one with him through spiritual communion. This is, of course, incredibly joyful. But it is strange. Yet strangeness can give us the eyes of a child again. Those of you with children or grandchildren will know how the eyes of a child find the whole world strange and new. A child will pause in wonder as much for a weed as for a rose exploring its strangeness, honouring its existence. And so too this year, are we given the eyes of a child to see the strangeness of Christ's body in this feast of Corpus Christi, to pause in wonder and to honour its reality. The body of Christ is the eternal word made strange. The beginning of John's gospel poetically circles around a cosmic impossibility. How on earth can a transcendent God have anything to do with creation? Well, the answer is that God's word embraces the strangeness of bodies. All things come from the eternal word as they're a creative source. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. While all things are created and so are unlike the word, they are dynamically suspended from the word as the source and summit of their existence. They depend on him as we do for their very existence. The infinite qualitative distinction between the words bodiless eternity and our contingent createdness marks out the excessive gratuity of God's love. For friends, it is out of love, not under compulsion, that God creates through the word, honouring the fragile beauty of bodies in creation. It is the excess of divine love that also radically bridges even the infinite qualitative distinction between God and creation. Faced with a broken creation, with broken bodies, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, full of grace and truth. Or as John's Gospel later puts it, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In the Gospels, the human body of the incarnate Christ is familiar. It is thoroughly and totally human. But his body is also strange, for it is personally united to the creative divine source of all things in a way unique to itself. The gift of salvation, then, is that what is personally true of the body of Christ, by which I mean union with God, is given to us by grace and adoption. The body of Christ is not simply his. It is ours by grace. So what is true of him is true of us. Christ's body then is a social body. This strangeness opens up the language of the church as the body of Christ. And this isn't a pretty metaphor. It's a deep reality of union with Christ's body so that we are an extension of the incarnation of God's action in the world. 
the boundaries of Christ's body are strange and amorphous. His resurrected body and glory is only properly speaking his, like any human body only belongs to a single person. But through union with his divine nature, it is infinite in application, as the Elizabethan divine Richard Hooker puts it. And so, as we receive the sacramental body of Christ, there is what Hooker also calls a transubstantiation in us. The word made strange in the incarnation makes our bodies strange too, as we are united as a social body in Christ, and united with the divine nature, the inner life of the Trinity. With the eyes of a child open to wonder, even as we cannot sacramentally receive the body of Christ, we can stop to see his body. We see it, of course, in the exposition of the sacrament as we watch online. But the word made strange allows us to see the extension of the incarnation in the church as it is active in worship and service every day. In this feast of Corpus Christi, then, we are called not only to worship the body of Christ, but to be utterly transformed by its reality in our lives. Our bodies are caught up and transformed in the strangeness of Christ's body, obliterating not the distinction between our human nature and God, but obliterating any sense that we are not drawn into the inner life of the Trinity here and now. That inner life is, of course, one of ecstatic, self-giving love, spilling out into creation and drawing us into intimate connection and communion with each other and with God. The Gospel of John, which we heard a few minutes ago, points us towards this dynamic and strange union of bodies. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. The institution of the Eucharist, recalled in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, reminds us that the sacrament is embroiled in the messy realities of the world. The institution of the Eucharist takes place, of course, on Monday, Thursday. Christ has washed his disciples' feet and given them a new commandment to love one another. He is then betrayed, handed over to torture and death, the breaking of his body, just as he has broken bread hours before. The crucifixion and resurrection lends a new strangeness to his body. It comes and goes. It is unrecognisable at first. It moves impossibly behind locked doors. It bears the scars and marks of mortality, but is also transformed in glory. And it ascends to heaven and sends the spirit. The body of Christ in glory neither ends suffering for us, nor does it stop suffering itself. But as the body of Christ extends into us through the spirit as the church, he and we speak as one into suffering, working as co-creators of the kingdom of God, already breaking into the world. And so in this pandemic, as we clearly see broken bodies throughout society, broken by illness, or the illnesses of poverty, racism and injustice, the body of Christ broken for us, calls us to break open God's kingdom as Christ's body. Let's all see then today the strangeness of our own bodies. For our true identities are located in Christ, with whom we are united in baptism and prayer and nourished through the Eucharist. And our identity in Christ is to be the church, the body of Christ in the world, drawing it to union with God. this feast of Corpus Christi, what wonderful, strange bodies we have in Christ. 
Thanks be to God. Amen.